my daughter was born backwards. Instead of the way we expect babies to be born, head first, or by C-section, I pushed my stubborn daughter out of me, feet first. Now when I tell you in two weeks I'd be involuntarily committed to Mount Sinai's psychiatric ward with postpartum depression, a place I stayed 18 days, would you be surprised? As I looked out the window from my calming lavender-colored room with no lock on the door and relentless bed checks, I was stunned about what this all meant for her and I. But what I was most worried about in that moment of crisis was work, not my daughter's health, not my own, but my work, that I'd never work again, that I would lose the work I love. Perhaps I was insane, but I know I'm not the first one to put work first, self second. Not everyone lands in the psych ward right after having a baby, but the child care and work challenge is universal. When families have to reduce their hours, families risk their income, the labor force shrinks and our economic health suffers. When the early education of children is a luxury for the few who can pay for it, we all take that gut punch. Helping more parents access work and be their whole selves at work is critical for the economy. Childcare is sometimes thought of as a kid's issue. I want you to consider it an economic imperative, a very grown-up issue. Employers rarely invite us to be 100% ourselves at work. Parents and non-parents often hide parts of themselves in order to be seen as professional. What part of yourself do you suppress in order to maintain a professional identity? For some, it's afternoon volunteer meetings or sports league away games. For others, it's entire identities, needing a prayer room, caring for a sick cousin, grieving a loss. For parents, it's the screaming toddler who wants a snack right when your online meeting is about to begin. You know this friction. I haven't met many people who enjoy screaming children on work calls with half-focused colleagues. And I know it's unfair to say you've had it easy in lockdown because you don't have kids. That statement undermines the many ways your whole self has been affected by COVID-19. These are barriers between our authentic selves and our work selves. The more we try to separate the two, the more we drift into a lose-lose reality. I know this reality intimately. When my father died by suicide, I told my team he died of a heart thing. I lied about it because I felt like my grieving self was irrelevant, that crying would make me unprofessional. I faced the reality of wanting to take care of my own mental health, which included working productively, especially after the psych ward. Grieving my father's death and finding affordable childcare simultaneously while pregnant again. It all came to a head with the birth of my second child. My childcare options were one, Lean on family, hard for me to do long term. Two, spend $50,000 a year on childcare. Who can afford that? Or three, quit my job for a lower paying part time one and care for the kids myself. These are the options facing every working parent and frankly, mostly marginalized genders since they still hold the childcare burden and are the ones leaving the workforce due to lack of childcare options. $50,000 per year. I saw an opportunity. What if I invested the money I'd be spending regardless? So I turned an old bank into a co-working facility with a childcare room. And there was something so delicious about turning a bank vault into a nap suite for tired parents. 
It was not easy. The workaround was born. Every day, I watch parents be more efficient in four hours than over a full day of back-to-back -back meetings, especially when there is no other option, like with Jack, the son of one of our members. Jack has congenital heart disease, and his parent, Jen, is the lower income earner in her household. Jen is an amazing photographer and fiercely loves Jack. But Jack's health needs mean few childcare options. So we welcomed Jack and Roger and Ori and Kofi and a ton of other children with exceptionalities. Parents who would otherwise leave the work they love for the children they also love. Choice is an illusion. I watched parents go from working once or twice a week to having to hire employees because they were so busy, all while their kids were nearby, connected to their parents' professional purpose. Still, what annoys me is when somebody hears I built office space with daycare, they say, how has that not existed before? It seems so obvious to have kids at work, but it's not. We continue to come up with all of these work innovations without solving the biggest and most urgent friction of all. As Canada entered lockdown in March, we learned that over a million women had their hours cut that month. Women lost more jobs because they're more likely to work in industries hit the worst, like service, retail, and food. Racialized communities were hit disproportionately so. But, but, when we reopened the economy, women didn't return to those jobs in great numbers. It's women and non-binary individuals who on average earn less, so they made the call to stay home with the kids. If it was between mom and dad, by the way, an assumption. Could be dad and dad, cousin and grandma, mom and mom and daycare. Small business has had it rough. I dread walking to work and seeing business owners, my friends with 20 years experience closing their restaurants and salons and play places to care for their kids. The truth is many brick and mortar shops, including local daycares, are on the brink of collapse. We cannot rebuild Main Street without small business, but we need childcare first. We need it now. We know how to do this. We know how to build infrastructure to get parents to work. We've done it with transit, which we largely invest in to deliver people to their workplace. Childcare is no different. Bringing our whole selves to work unlocks potential, and we should want that for everyone. But parents can't access their whole selves because they are fundamentally blocked by childcare. Care in all forms is essential to our shared economic health. You may never need childcare, but you will need your care or your family's care prioritized at work. But it would be a whole lot easier if it was with work. Whether you see childcare as an economic or equality battle, a feminist issue, the government's problem, a childhood development strategy, or simply this parent needs a goddamn day off plea. This is your fight too. Here's the thing. Supporting colleagues at work with kids also lessens the load on the ones who don't have kids. For example, you can put a no meetings rule between 8 to 10 a.m. and 4 to 6 p.m. That's when kids are hungry and loud. Or brunch meetups instead of evening team beers. We've created a wildly imbalanced professional world where not everyone can fully participate. Marginalized genders, precarious workers, and especially people of color are disproportionately affected by this backwards work first approach. We start to resolve this by accepting that the productivity and prosperity of parents is linked to the productivity and prosperity of non-parents, of business, and of the economy. 
that care and business are indeed two sides of the same coin. What happens when we start prioritizing care at work? Starting with childcare sets the stage for many other opportunities. Mental health challenges, family changes, all the things that make us human. The economy is made up of the sum of our collective efforts. Together, we can build a better, a new version of capitalism that sees childcare directly related to our economic and personal potential. With my daughter's birth, I learned it's much easier to bring your head and heart through first. Then everything else follows smoothly. It's why we normally birth babies head first. What happens if you show up with your whole identity, passions and loved ones first? Everything else is easier once you accomplish that. A new way forward is possible. Start with childcare. Will you join me in caring? <laughs>